Seven months of the pandemic, seven months of our kids staying out of the classrooms and adjusting to the new normal of studying from screens. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, it all depends on who you ask, really. As our economy opens up, the government has decided to open the schools as well, but only on a voluntary basis. On FII today, we explore what exactly are the guidelines that the school have floated? Are the schools prepared for these guidelines? Basically, is it safe for your kid to get back to school? First up, it's about 11.30 right now, so some schools which had to open have already opened. These pictures on your screen are of uh, how it looked like when the school gates opened for the first time after almost seven months of the pandemic. Now, what do you see over there? Not many takers, right? Understandably, not many takers for the reopening. In fact, since education is a concurrent subject, several states have decided not to open at all. Let's give you a pan-India picture on how the country is looking like. Which states are opening schools and which are not? Let's talk about which are opening as of today. Assam, partial reopening of schools will be allowed with a written consent form from the parents. Himachal Pradesh also open. Schools will reopen from class 9 to 12 for guidance uh, from teachers. Nagaland also partially reopening on a voluntary basis. Punjab also open. So is Andhra Pradesh except in containment zones. Jammu and Kashmir schools have also opened with only 50% attendance. Meghalaya students are also being asked to come to school if they want to. Haryana as well, schools are open on a voluntary basis. But there are some states, like we pointed out, where they have decided not to reopen these schools. Let's look at that list now. That includes Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal, Maharashtra, even Delhi, where they've decided not to open schools just yet. Now, this is of course happening because uh, when the states feel they are not ready yet to open the schools and perhaps are ready to take in the students actually going back in clusters and whether or not they'll manage to keep up with the SOPs or guidelines. So the question is, if the states are not ready, what made the health ministry so convinced that they wanted to order reopening? Let's, there has been a lot of ambiguity over this, remember, but the guidelines that they have laid out, let's put that out on your screen right now to make you understand what exactly is it that the government is expecting schools and states to offer at this time in case the schools reopen. Now, government is saying that classes 9 to 12 can resume on a voluntary basis. Decision of sending the child to school will be left to the parents. Parents will need to give a written letter of permission that the student will carry to the schools. Online classes will continue simultaneously, remember, because there might be few who decide not to go. So what to, for them, online classes are to continue. Social distancing of at least six feet will be followed as far as feasible is what the guideline says. Physical distancing in staff room, in reception area, the mess, library, cafeteria, all to be followed. Presence of only 50% of teachers and non-teaching staff. Assemblies, sports, events that can lead to overcrowding are not to be allowed at this point. Swimming pools, gyms, they also will remain shut. And in case uh, that uh, is to be followed, but apart from that, there are precautions that they want schools to implement at their end. This includes school putting out thermal screening at the entry gates. Face covering is mandatory, you have to have a mask on. Only asymptomatic students and teachers will be allowed inside. Posters for preventive measures are to be displayed as well quite prominently, the guideline says. Also, regular sanitation of classroom is to take place. Sanitizers to be placed at multiple places as well. And use of the Arogya Setu app may be advised. Now, what happens if the staff comes to school and suddenly it's realized that they have symptoms? Now, for symptomatic people, what is the SOP? What is to be done urgently? Now, the nearest medical facility is to be alerted. Risk assessment by public authority is supposed to be done. That means a local CMO of the area or the team of the area will have to intervene and have a look at what they need to do, depending on the nature of the outbreak. Disinfection of the entire school campus will have to take place. So that's what the government has said. Remember, it's been a health ministry guideline. So the education department is not really speaking here. But it's interesting how the health ministry has come out with these guidelines on schools reopening. Let's also now get a world view on this matter. It's a global situation, remember. We have dug out now the World Economic Forum study for you that finds that reopening of schools too early in developing countries could undermine the gains made so far in containing the spread of the virus. 
It also says when deciding to reopen schools, policymakers need to weigh their findings against the cost of keeping schools closed for a prolonged period. And also in developing countries, this is important to remember, reopening of schools significantly increased the risk of spreading COVID-19. So that's what the World Economic Forum is saying. Let's take a look at now a graph that he's got out for you from the United Nations. Now the graph on your screen right now talks about the proportion of the population infected by the COVID-19 under four policy scenarios. Now the blue line on your screen talks about the simulates the effects of an immediate school reopening. This leads to a large increase in infection. The other scenario talks about the effect of delaying schools to reopen until January 2021 and these lead to a much flatter curve. So that's how the world is viewing this. Remember, COVID has been a leveller for everybody. Now, the FI team went and spoke with students and parents to understand how are they feeling about reopening. This is what we got. Hi, I'm Jyoti Chavia. My daughter, Moisha Chavia, is a student of 12th standard in JNN College. I am skeptical about sending my daughter back to college, even if it reopens on 21st September, because the number of COVID cases is still on a rise. The pandemic has not yet subsided. I do understand online education has its own share of challenges, such as the constant eye fatigue and the lack of focus. Having said that, safety comes first. Hence, I would hesitate to send my daughter back to college. Hello, myself Jyasha De. My age is 17 and I read in class 11 in Howard Memorial School. If now school gets reopened, I really want to go to school. But in this situation, I prefer not to go to school because to go to school, I have to uh, go through even buses or sometimes rickshaws. So there I can may come in contact with people who may carry that virus, which is risky for me and my family too. I think in this situation, I should not take a risk and uh, stick to online classes only. My name is Arshia Banerjee. I study in Loretodi School, Bobazar, class 9, and I am 15 years old. If schools really reopen in India and in my state, I am eager to go to my school, meet my friends and meet everyone because online classes are really stressful. I feel that some subjects like especially the science subjects and mathematics which needs conceptual understanding um, will be really easy if I go to the school and interact and get my concepts clear uh, in school as they are not easy to learn in uh, online classes so I want my school to reopen all right, so you saw over there how the divide is mostly at this point saying that we're not ready to go back to the school. But there is a whole another angle to education that is happening at these times. The digital divide, the digital inequality that separates the haves and the have nots with technology and Internet. Now, in this case, the developing country like India stands to lose at a great degree. We also reached out to some of the households to try and understand their struggle. These households, not very privileged right here in the capital, who are struggling. Not a single device per person, at times no internet as well. School में पढ़ाई करना अच्छा लगता था या online में आप पढ़ाई अच्छी कब होती थी? School. School में होती थी. तो online में क्या-क्या दिक्कत आ रही बेटा? ये दिक्कत आ रही है कि एक ही फोन है और सब लोग काम नहीं कर पाते हैं. हाँ. एक ही फोन है. हाँ तो आप लोग दीदी के साथ आप फोन आपको शेयर करना पड़ता है एक एक टाइम पे. तो ऐसे में पढ़ाई हो जाती है आपकी? No. क्या क अच्छा और बाकी जो दो दो और आपके भाई बहन हैं वो इसका तो बिल्कुल नहीं होता है लोगों बिल्कुल नहीं होता है all right, so that's a situation of lakhs and uh, millions really of students in the country as we speak. So for them, it makes sense to actually go back to the school. Also in Haryana, community schools have begun. With the lack of individual mobile phones and laptops, kids in the neighborhood get together to study from one device. With all noble intentions really, but just look what that turned out to be. No social distancing. This is what one needs to strictly avoid at this point. But is there really an option for these students who all get together on one bench over there really, on one court that has been stitched together and they're all studying from one particular device?
All right, so that's all the information you needed to understand this issue. Let's break it open to our uh, guests joining us uh, today. We've got uh, parents and we've got principals. We've got uh, Abhishek Mehrotra. He's a parent of a ninth standard and a sixth standard student. We see the girls over there as well sitting with him. We've got Rashmi Chopra. She's a parent of a ninth grade uh, child. We've got Arvind Tiwari, a parent as well. And then we've got uh, Dr. Sandeepa Sood. She's a principal in Fagwara and Monica Sharma. She's a teacher of the senior government secondary school in Gurugram. Let me begin with the parents. Abhishek, if I can come to you first. You are somebody whose uh, daughter is in ninth standard. Are you ready to send her to school just yet? Yeah, so, so Aranya is there. My daughter, she's in class uh, ninth. But I guess um, right now we don't know if uh, it's safe enough to send the kids to school. We haven't tested it out. Uh, we don't know. The guidelines are there, but our school's ready. Nobody has tested on the ground. Uh, and with bigger schools that my kids are in, uh, with so many students, uh, I guess uh, we need more, more proof to really know if it is safe to send them in. And so are those I read uh, out what the guidelines, guidelines are, Abhishek, right? I told you what individually yeah. all the schools and states are mandated to do. Is this enough for yeah. you to consider at this point or what's your fear? See, I think uh, there is a lot of difference between guidelines being laid out on the paper and how they get implemented on the ground. So we just looked at it. The parliament session started uh, uh, and it was scheduled for a certain amount of time and now we hear it's going to be probably curtailed because some of the MPs have fallen. So so what you, how it gets implemented is what as a parent I would like to know. Hmm. Uh, and, and, do, and, and nobody has done a trial run. We don't even know how it's going to span out. Uh, there is a second wave which is coming in despite the unlocks that we had. Hmm. So, so what is needed is not, uh, while of course I know the guidelines are there, but we need to know how it is going to get on, uh, implemented on the ground. And that's important for me as a parent to really be confident of sending my kids to school. Not enough confidence to, chen, uh, to send my child to school. Rashmi, uh, can I bring in you over here? Is it particularly different and perhaps more difficult for mothers at this point? And is it almost related to parents going to work? Because if that happens, then you have no option but to send your child to school. Uh, definitely, I see a big challenge uh, as a parent and as a working mother of children. Uh, we as parents are facing that struggle and anxiety while we go to workplace and try to be, you know, rotational. Hmm. So the thought of sending the children to school, even if they say it's a staggered, Hmm. Uh, so it leads to a lot of peer pressure with children. So, you know, one, if this parents say that uh, it's at your own consent, hmm. uh, you send the children. So, you know, it would be actually send the children to school. Uh, so that's a big debate which uh, will happen, uh, you know, once they say that it's on a voluntary basis, nothing hmm. is voluntary. When the school is mandated to come to our doubts, then hmm. I'm sure peer pressure a lot of uh, students would feel uh, to go to school but having said that there's a big challenge today of social distancing strict hygiene right now one of the doctor parents said the toughest challenge that he faces in the hospital is in the pediatric ward hmm. and the waiting area that uh, you know there is no social distancing in the pediatric area hmm. so if you're thinking on that sense if you open the school even in staggered manner hmm. we don't see that, that strictness happening yeah online assessment and learnings are working very well uh, the board has reduced the course content hmm. the practical learning sites are there and as far as the other schools who cannot afford online learning I can give a suggestion on uh, the IGNU level of distant learning where the assignment and assessments are printed and sent out to the children right so that they don't miss out on the assignments all right uh, hold that so, thought so, on what do you think the schools can do yeah. i'll bring in the principals on that as well i quickly want to bring in arvind tiwari as well arvind one of the major concerns for parents has been just this exposure to screen time is that a cause of worry enough at this point for you to say, well, enough of online classes, we need to start schools? Because remember, the WHO at this point says that the COVID virus is not going anywhere till 2022. So are you ready to keep and give your child online classes for that long a period? See, the point is right now, the balancing the situation, the situation right now is very fluid and the 
we are seeing a situation wherein every day the cases of corona is increasing so we have not reached not yet reached the peak the point here is that how long do you continue with this online education because it has got repercussions on the uh, health of the child also be, uh, on, on a different perspective because the eyes are getting damaged then there is a mental and psychological issue on that part hmm. and what i personally feel is that online education is not complete and substantive hmm. they, they you know it's just you know, it is, i feel they are just keeping the child engaged but yet apart from that i feel that even the situation right now is not conducive for the physical opening of the school because okay. the plateau we have not even near the plateau right now forget the decline had this decision been taken when the mm. situation of the cases were on a declining trend mm. that time the parents would have been okay see the initially the now we now we as parents were very clear that you know till unless and until the uh, uh, vaccine comes in mm. then that is a sure sort way that you know we could think of sending the child to school but the vaccine also not very clear mm. we don't know how when how soon that will be developed mm. how long can we continue with the online education is also a criteria that we we need to think on but so if i'm understanding you correctly arvind you are saying you're not very happy with online education but you have no choice until no the choice. vaccine at least gets in you are saying you're yeah. not ready to send your child out back to school let me bring yeah. in monica sharma she's a teacher at the government uh, senior secondary school in palam vihar gurugram uh, when you hear concerns from parents like these i'm sure there are concerns for teachers as well the amount of exposure that they have while the jury is completely out and we'll perhaps need another show to talk about which way online education is really going are there any concerns from the part of the teachers when it comes to reopening exactly ma'am uh, if you ask me emotionally we both teachers and students really want to open our schools because uh, uh, schools are in close for 6 months it's a long period we really want to connect directly but when we uh, go deep in the situation when we uh, think about the results of the reopening of the schools it may be disastrous actually hmm. because uh, uh, teachers have been asked to get their test uh, corona test test if they are negative only they are allowed to come to school but uh, who get it guarantees if i am negative today hmm. suppose i am negative today Uh, if it is a compulsory that I'm, I will not be. Uh, I'm not going to be positive in some next That's days. That's right. Exactly. Students are no. Uh, students are not being tested for on a positive corona test. Not the parents also. If, if government government want to open the school, we also want to open the school. The proper sanitization, proper management should be there. Okay. Online. We are running online classes. Right. Uh, as earlier you said, if we don't want to continue this online classes, but we are helpless. we don't have Helpless. any other choice so what can the schools do in this scenario let me bring in the principal of saffron public school in fagwara dr sandeepa sood thanks for speaking with us uh, take us through are you convinced with these guidelines from the government and practically speaking how much do you think you'll manage to implement uh i am very much convinced about the guidelines of the government actually hmm. this is a long time you see the schools has been closed for you can say 6 to 7 months is is a is a long period the children are getting into depressive disorder there are so many other problems the kids are facing uh, as a school principal we we are trying to implement all the guidelines of the central government and we assure the parents we are definitely going to implement all the safety guidelines all the uh, parameters which is going to uh, keep the children at the safety bar like so we are ready for all those uh, you can say challenges but definitely we we have to come forward hmm. the uh, educational fraternity has to come forward for the opening of the school maybe in a partial manner because there there is a lot of education which really need face to face interaction also hmm. so uh, in our school like we are we are trying we are convincing the parents also at least the board class especially 10th and 12th okay 10th and 12th at least i'm towards the end of the show let me just bring in a last word and let me give it to a student it's their future that we're actually talking about abhishek if we could speak to your daughter ananya and get a view on what she feels about this entire scenario all right ananya uh, what about kids like you i'm sure you're missing out your friends you're missing your classes as well and your teachers but how do you feel about the scenario are you concerned about going back to school or are you enjoying your online classes um i mean i cannot say that i'm enjoying online classes a lot because there are many subjects like arts or there are other uh, subjects where you need to do group projects and it's really hard to connect online to be able to discuss you need a lot of places where you need to interact face to face to be able to work 
and uh, for me on a personal note being an art student going to school is kind of a necessity right now because online through videos is not possible to do the learning but uh, when talking about safety i think online is the safest option all right online is the safest option uh, so i guess we got to leave it over there so that's pretty much what we are hearing from parents schools at this time a little convinced about how things are going on but parents saying that well we're not enjoying online classes but is there another option also one of the sentiments that we are hearing from parents is that perhaps schools should be the last thing at this point that open we'll have to see where it goes like we said today few states have decided to open but there were no takers for at least day 1 this is a story we'll keep tracking here that's all we have for you on FII today you can write to us with all the feedback in case there is an issue that you want us to raise on the show please write in with your feedback and all your tweets we'll be going through that that's all for today see you again tomorrow at 11:30